Hi here, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be discussing on Langchain Runnables. So before going to Runnables, we will have a quick overview of what is Langchain. I, I believe that everybody have an uh, understanding about the Langchain, but still it is a framework for developing applications powered by large language models. Okay. So its key components include LLMs, prompt, tools, memory, agents, agents document loaders and the retrievers. Okay. In a high level, the LLM are for generating the text-based output and the prompt is a, a template that structure input text to the LLM okay. and tools which will help the LLM model to interact with the outside world through APIs or databases and memory which is for maintaining the conversation context across the inter interactions just to keep the context of the conversations and we will have an agent, agent is automatically taking the decisions based on the input. And we will have document loaders and retrievers and uh, this is for the injecting and retrieving the document from the various sources. So don't worry, we will discuss more about all those this common in our coming videos. Okay. So the major topic that we are going to discuss about in this video is with respect to the, the ma major building blocks of Langchain that is the chain. Okay. A chain is a sequence of modular components that can be combined to create more complex workflows. Okay, so we will have a consider we will have an input component and we will have a uh, LLM component and we will have an output component. So the chains will help them chain together, chain together all those uh, components and which will work together. Okay, so when we pass an input, um, the input will pass the, uh, the input prompt to the LLM model component. So the output from the LLM model component will be passed through the uh, pass through the uh, output component okay the finally a formatted output will be given to the user so that is how this chains works so in this video we will see how can we create a chain and uh, how can we create a runnable component so here it is a runnable okay so all those components is is getting this kind of a feature because these components are inherited from the runnables so most of the major components are inherited from the runnable interface for example our uh, what we say uh, chat models chat models is in inherited from the runnables directly or from the uh, sub classes of the runnables so we can say a unit of work that can be invoked batched streamed transformed and composed so that is the definition for the runnable and once a method or class is inherited from the runnable, it will have a following methods. It will have a invoke method or asynchronous invoke method. And it will have a batch or asynchronous batch methods. And it has a stream or asynchronous stream method. And it has a, a stream log methods also. Okay. So we can see how can we create a runnable component or how can we make a, a component is as a runnable. Then we can see how can we chain these components together. Okay. For that, uh, let me switch to my Visual Studio code. So here I have my requirement file. You guys can run it. Uh, pp install minus r requirement.x. I'm not going to run it because I have already done that. And I have my notebook is open here. Okay. So let's see how can we create a runnable thing. For that, I can use the Langchain uh, core. Langchain dot runnables. Okay. From this, I can create a runnable lambda. Okay, now we can create a runnable component. I can say that runnable, okay, I can use runnable lambda. Here I can mention a function, lambda x is a simple function. What I will do, I will print the x. Okay, so by doing this, okay, so we made this particular function as a runnable. So as per our discussions that we have done, a runnable will have a invoke method right so i can just do a invoke method here i can pass a file okay let me do that close it so here we can see okay here we can see the file is printing so it is just printing the file okay and it is a runnable so i can do a batch kind of a thing okay so this is also one of the feature right five four three two let me run it. So we will be getting a output as a 5432 because it is converted to string and we are getting in a batch kind of a thing. Okay. Now we can have a, uh, we discussed about batch and we can have a, a invoke also we can do. Okay. So I can do a 
runnable dot a invoke asynchronous invoke also we can do here see so this is a asynchronous invoke is also we will able to do okay so in this way we will able to make a function as a runnable okay now we can see how can we do a streaming part for that let me write a function okay so this function will x uh, as, uh, as a input parameter as a x and y in x i can do a yield string of y okay so this is my function okay now let me make a runnable with respect to this okay so for that i can make a runnable to make a runnable i can use the runnable lambda and i can pass this function okay so this is my runnable now we can try to see how can we do the streaming for that i can have a for chunk in i can use runnable dot stream okay now as a function i am going to pass a range 5 okay now let me print the chunk see now we are getting it as a stream okay so this is very simple now we can see how can we combine two components together okay chain together okay so for that what we can do first let me create a runnable one i can create a runnable lambda here i can pass a lambda function and this will be foo and this will be five okay now i can have a runnable two here i can make a runnable lambda here we will have a x and here we will have a x into 2 okay so these are the two runnables okay now i can i am going to make a chain with respect to this runnable one so we will be using a, um, a language pipe here and i can use a runnable 2 okay so here we are combining these two runnables so output from runnable 1 will be passed through the runnable 2 okay we can see that now let me go and do a chain dot inbox and i am passing a value 5 see this the first one we are passing the 5 so in the in the first case this will be foo 5 okay so this foo 5 will be passed to our second uh, runnable okay that is why we are getting this kind of output okay so let me say it again okay so we will have a 5 we are passing so once we pass this so for that let me do to make it clear let me make it runnable dot invoke 5 okay so this is the output from the runnable dot 5 and this 5 what we are doing we are actually passing to our second runnable okay something like this okay we are passing two so this will print two times so that is why we are getting this output okay so in this way we will able to easily chain together okay so we understood how can we chain um, two components together okay now we can see how uh, how can we run it parallel okay we'll see how can we run it parallel to run it parallel what uh, i am using i am using the same um, runnable one so instead of okay so for that what i can do i can import one more thing runnable lambda and also i need to import runnable parallel okay i'm importing that now here what i can do i can do a runnable parallel okay now i can say that uh, first equal to runnable one and second equal to runnable two okay now chain dot two i mean chain dot invoke and i can invoke five okay see in the first case we are getting a foo five okay in the second case we are getting the five five okay. because these are running in parallel okay in our first case when we combine together okay using the pipe symbol then the output from the runnable one is going to the input of runnable two 
okay here that is not happening the same input is passing through the runnable one and the runnable two okay i think um, this is clear now we can see how can we do a controllable runnables okay for that what i can do okay i can create a chain okay and uh, what i am going to say that i am going to create a runnable lambda okay and i can set a lambda x okay i can call runnable 1 if x is greater than 6 else i can call a runnable 2 so this is the conditional runnable okay let me execute this see what we are doing here so here we are getting a input x and based on the input value we are calling the runnables so we may be calling the runnable 1 or runnable 2 okay in this way we are creating a conditional chain now let me invoke this with 6 okay uh, since it is greater than uh, 6 we are getting the um, uh, we are getting the chain 2 or let me make it 2 just a second no no this is wrong okay so let me make it runnable 1 runnable 2 okay i just run it again and let me run this again this is correct but when we do the 6 or 26 okay so now now this is working fine okay now let me see that chain dot invoke i just run it again so if i am giving 5 okay so if i am giving 5 it is running the runnable uh, 2 so runnable 2 is you can see runnable 2 is this one so if we give a 5 okay it will create 5 into 2 okay it's a list multiplication is happening okay so that is why we are getting the two items okay it's actually doubling the uh, items and if we make greater than 6 maybe let me put it 7 then we are getting the runnable one that is the foo one so in this way we can do a conditional chaining can be done okay. now last thing that we need to discuss is with respect to um showing in a graph way okay for that what i can do i have the we have the runnable one so let me make it copy and paste to make it clear uh, so these are the two runnables let me copy this i believe the copy will work paste it. okay and let me make it a runnable two a runnable three <coughs> for that i can use a runnable lambda lambda x is equal to str of str of x okay so this is the runnable item okay now i can create a chain okay so for that uh, let me have a runnable one which can be uh, combined and i can use a runnable parallel and here i can say that my second function should be runnable 2 and third will be runnable 3 okay here what will happen here first it will run the runnable 1 and output of runnable will be passed to the runnable 2 and the runnable 3 okay now the goal is we need to visualize this thing okay to visualize this what we can do we can create a graph i can call a get graph and i can do a print ascii so if you do this okay i need to install this particular package for that let me do a pip install i will add this also with the requirement copy paste is not working let me check this just a moment I can do a pip install like this okay so this is done now let me execute this So this is running ok 
can wait for it. See, here we have a lambda input, then we have a lambda, then we will be executing a third and uh, second and third parallel. Two lambda functions are executing parallel. Then finally, we are getting the output from this parallel process. Okay, so in this way, we will able to do graphical representation also. Okay, so that is all about in this video. Okay, so I believe everybody understood the advantage of using the runnables and how can we make it in, in a chain. Okay, so I will be uploading this to my GitHub and you guys can try and see other different options also. So thank you very much for watching my video. Please do like and subscribe. Have a nice day. Bye bye.